Okay, my goal here is to demonstrate this uh, LUKS, or LUX, file system or encryption vulnerability that's been floating around the infosec world for the past couple of weeks. Um, basically, I've got a Fedora 24 VM here, and I'm going to just open up a console, bring it center screen here, and hit the play button. All right, we got good old Grub. This is a plain Fedora 24 install. I've done nothing to it other than encrypt it by checking the encrypt file system checkbox while it was installing. So we're going to get the Plymouth boot screen here with the, the password prompt for the encrypted volume. I'm just going to hit escape, which brings me to a text mode boot screen asking me for the same password. Now I'm going to hold enter on my keyboard until I see the crypto setup fail. And there it is. Failed to start cryptography setup. Now we just wait. So at this point of the boot, we're in what's called the init RAM FS, which is the init initialization RAM file system. Okay, uh, what this does is it's a very stripped down and basic uh, Linux or operating system that will start, you know, get things started. Uh, it starts a couple of services, it gets your disks mounted, and then it hands things over to your systemd or whatever init system your Linux box runs. Um, because of that, this thing has access to a couple of core operating system components. However, it doesn't have any sort of special privileges to your, your machine. It can't walk past your encryption, which is why it has to ask you for the password here. So what should happen is um, we're going to end up at a shell in what's called Dracut. Uh, I've heard it also referred to as BusyBox, but uh, I believe they're one and the same. So the concept here is it's meant to be a troubleshooting shell. Now keep in mind I'm at the console here. This isn't something you can do remotely. This isn't something that I can, you know, try to brute force SSH on a box and get to this. As soon as I try to do this sort of thing, your system's going to drop offline, right? So at this point, the system is not connected to the network. It's not connected to any network file systems. It's not running any services. I really can't attack anything on it. So we'll just wait a few more moments. You should start to see an error soon about... Uh, the Dracut initialization system failing because it can't mount that uh, crypto volume. And there we go. Dracut init queue and its process ID. It's uh, complaining about a timeout. It does this for 30 seconds or so, maybe a little less. And then it drops you to a Dracut shell so that you can try to troubleshoot what the problem with boot was. Now I've seen this error happen in other cases that were completely unrelated to Lux. So this really... It may be a symptom of a Lux bug, you know, by holding the enter key and sending Lux an empty password over and over again. Maybe it shouldn't drop to this odd state. But in the end, there are probably a dozen ways to get to this same error simply by interrupting the disk mounting procedure on uh, on on your system within the init RAM FS. A little bit longer and we'll have the prompt everyone's been all up about. Okay, here we are. So you see this little pa uh, hash symbol? That means that this is supposedly a root shell. Now, Dracut, as far as I know, doesn't have any concept of users. So this is just the default Dracut shell. It's not elevated, it's just Dracut. So, a few things we can do from here. You can see we can view the network interfaces, which probably means we can configure a network interface. So you could theoretically start up a network interface and then um, once it's started, connect to this thing remotely and do other nasty things. Maybe put software on it or, uh, well, I'm sure there's lots of other nasty things that I can't think of at the moment. So we're looking at the root file system here, but it's not the root file system of the server, it's the root file system of the init RAMFS. So here you can see my local VM's hard drive, which is dev SDA. 
So let's make a misspelled mount point inside of temp. <laughs> Unintentionally misspelled. It's my mountain point. And there's my boot volume. Not too much of a surprise here. Init ram f's init ram fs lives in your boot volume. See it right here. This is the image that is the init rd or the init ram fs. So from here you could do things like change the grub config file. Maybe. Yeah, I have full write privileges to this thing, so I can move things around and rewrite stuff. I'm gonna move that back so my VM will still boot out, still boot when I'm done here. Now we also saw dev SDA two. Right? See that? It doesn't let me mount it because it's a crypto volume. So, in order to mount this, I'd have to mount it as a crypto volume, and I'd have to have the password. So I can't actually get any data off of it. Uh, what I could do is destroy it. Uh, you know, use DD or something. No, DD's not there. Well, I'm sure there's some utility here that would allow me to destroy this volume if I really wanted to. Um, the the main thing I could see that this could be an issue is if you don't have the entire file system encrypted and in fact only have like home volumes encrypted, you could boot into Dracut like this and then you could mount root and you could modify things within Etsy or if you have you know, your encrypted volume set to auto mount using a stored password, you could probably get that password by booting this way. Um, so those are nasty things. However, remember, I'm at the console. There's no way to do this remotely. This is something that you need to either be physically at the console or have a virtual console like I have in front of me right now. And even on uh, a hypervisor where these consoles are accessible over the network, that stuff should be protected. There should be a password in place. There should be, you know, a uh, the firewall um, rule in place that prevents people from getting here that aren't supposed to be here. So uh, there you have it. I've uh, successfully bypassed, or not bypassed, I've successfully exploited Lux to get me to a Dracut shell. Um, I'm going to say there's a bunch of other ways to do this, and I'm going to find a couple of them and record a similar video so people can compare the level of access you might get from different sorts of exploits. All right, thanks for watching.